I went to CES, Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas. It is absolutely overwhelming. There is so much stuff. It takes a lot of effort to weed through the mediocre stuff to find the really good stuff. What I liked to really see at CES were things that were not just like an incremental increase or an incremental improvement. They were like something completely different. So I want to show you uh, one of the things that I went there to see that I knew was going to be there. This is the Aptera. So this is a car that is built to be as efficient as possible, meaning it's going to use the least amount of energy possible to move two people at freeway speeds. So it's, as you can see, the shape is very unique, very different than most cars. We think cars that we drive are aerodynamic, but they are not, not as much as they could be if they were willing to, to change the, the shape and the look. This is like the ideal shape uh, for, for aerodynamics. And that reduces the drag when you're trying to push this thing down the road at highway speeds. So when you're driving like a Tesla, say, Tesla, get, it will take about 300 watt hours per mile. Uh, this thing will take about 100. So it's it takes a third less energy to move this than it does a Tesla. You couple that with putting 700, uh, 700 watts of solar on the car. And if you can park in the sun, uh, in a sunny place, you can get up to like 40 miles of driving range every day without ever plugging the car in. It's got a battery, um, and because it's so efficient, the battery goes a lot longer. This one, a 400-mile battery, but they're gonna have a 1,000-mile battery, which is amazing, right? A 1,000-mile battery? It's, it's super efficient, I love that. Um, the shape is very different, I think that's fine. I, I think there's gonna be a lot of people that are like, no way I'm ever driving that thing, and that's fine. The way that this car and the windshield and stuff are shaped, uh, it's similar to like some like helmets, like motorcycle helmets, and that you don't get bugs. You won't get bugs splattered on the windshield here because of the, the shape and everything, the way that the, the bugs will just f blow past. They'll, they'll get pushed over or around or whatever. But uh, to me, it, it, what matters most is the function of it. But then a thing that they've done that is super different is the way they built it. The main structural components of this are a something like reinforced carbon fiber. It's like a, they make this mush of carbon fiber stuff and get it all heated up and then they press it in a mold. Like the main structure of the car is only like 10 parts. I wanna say, when I say efficient, I mean like they don't use a lot of parts. If you think about the number of parts that go into building a regular car, it's massive, right? I mean, it's thousands. And even just the frame itself is like hundreds. This is very simple in its construction because of the way that they're able to design and then mold these parts. It's built more like a race car than like a standard uh, consumer car. And so that stuff is really light. That stuff is really recyclable for what that's worth to you and strong at the same time. And then it's molded so that everything is like perfect. So you, you glue things together. You don't have to weld things together. There are connectors like screws and bolts and stuff, but the majority of it is held together with an adhesive. So it's bonded together. This is what it looks like up close. It's kind of like a marbled look to it. So all of the structural pieces uh, inside the car and underneath the car and stuff have this marbled black look to them. But then these panels on the side here, this is how they come out of the mold as well. So these are made out of a, a slightly different uh, fiber material. It comes out with this silvery metallic -y color. So you don't have to paint it. You can put a wrap on it, that's great but there's no painting. There's no layers and layers and layers of paint and layers and layers of clear coat. It just comes out like this. So as far as the manufacturing process goes, that saves massive amounts of, of energy and time and waste and, and they're gonna do the crash testing and they'll get the crash test results. But because of the shape, it, it's like an egg. As far as you know, the crushing of it, it's got actually quite a bit of strength. Uh, compared to, you know, sort of the frame cars that we build where we have to like, okay, we have to reinforce this area or reinforce that area. There are some things that they reinforce here as well, but because of the shape, uh, it's actually quite strong. Even though it's it's technically, because it's three wheels, it's technically like an auto cycle. They don't have to do a lot of the things that, that a car manufacturer has to do, like airbags and things, but they're doing them anyways. So they're going to have airbags, be side airbags, top airbags, 
front airbags, all that kind of stuff. I thought it was going to feel really small. It doesn't feel really small, but it does feel smaller than a regular car, especially like where you put your feet, where your feet go down at the bottom. It was really kind of small. Look how tight that is for my feet. Like, and I don't have big feet, but my feet, even up against the side rest here, were kind of like rubbing the brake pedal. That's a little tight. They are very right to repair strong. So they, they said every part on this car is going to have its little code that they use for manufacturing. If you break something, like supposedly you're going to be able to just scan the code, tell them which part you need, and then you can get the part from their factory. They're not going to tie you into like Tesla. Like you cannot touch anything on your Tesla, right? So they're going to the total opposite of that. This is actually solar panels on the dash too. I didn't really like the way that they looked. They were kind of wavy. But this is kind of what the interior looks like. It's got a yoke steering wheel. This little panel right here is the rear view mirrors. So you can see a right and left rear view mirror. This is the infotainment. A couple of interesting things here. This actually, the vents that do like the air conditioning and everything and the heating are around here. I don't know if there's others. There might be others in other places, but at least the central ones are just in the, the what do you call it? The bezel of this infotainment. This thing is very dependent on the touchscreen. I am becoming less and less a fan of touchscreen uh, controls for things. It's fine for some things, but how often does it just not work as well as you want? If it's critical, I just want to flip a switch. I would like to see a, a combination. This plus give me some manual buttons, right? Plenty of headroom in this. I'm not a tall guy, but there's plenty of headroom in this. The windows, I thought this would be kind of a distraction this, this bar here in the in the window, but it wasn't too bad. The only part that rolls up and down is this part right here. The armrest was comfortable and all that stuff. It didn't, it felt like it was encroaching a little bit, but it wasn't terrible. And the other thing was the door here, because you kind of got to back into it. You can try and jump in like, like you would jump in a normal car, but the easier thing to do is to kind of put your butt in first. So you kind of face away from the car. You got to be careful not to hit your head on this and then sit down and swing your legs in. Um, the seats were okay. They weren't really bucketed. They were kind of flat. That's fine. They had, they did have a nice big drink holder here, a little zippy kind of glove box thing here. And then, like I said, the foot area where you put your feet as the passenger and the driver is where I think uh, it's, it's going to be tight. These are some of the stats that they talk about. 10 times more efficient than a typical car, 40 miles on daily solar range, 32.5 cargo space. Oh, I'll take, I think I got some pictures of the cargo area. Uh, re reduced CO2, 400 mile range, 40 K, which has gone up. It was 30 something initially, but as you can expect, like it says here, there's over 19,000 investors. I'm happy to say that I'm one of them. I'm actually number 1,186, which means car number 1,186 off the production line is mine. I think it's also important to point out that this car that they brought to CES is not a concept car. This is their production intent vehicle meaning the parts that this car is made of are the production parts. Like any startup car manufacturer, they've constantly had to push back the expected delivery date. But right now, testing production intent vehicles, and they should be starting to deliver some of these vehicles in 2025. Unfortunately, I was not able to take a test drive, but I have been in touch with the Aptera uh, media person, and I will be able to go down to their factory in San Diego at some point. So just to sum up, the Aptera is definitely a large step forward in car manufacturing, not only in things like efficiency of performance, like the shape and the energy use, but also in the manufacturing and how they're able to make these cars. If you're interested in Aptera and you want to know more about them, first and foremost, check out Aptera Owners Club. That's the gateway drug. <laughs> That's all for now. As always, Thanks for watching. Till next time, adios.